the Schrodinger equation is of the form a d square psi dx squared plus u psi equal to b d psi dt. I showed it in the previous video titled the form of the Schrodinger equation you haven't been taught that the Schrodinger equation can also be written as follows. The wave function generally used is of the following form. And for this wave function, psi, to satisfy the Schrodinger equation, a must be equal to minus h bar over 2m, and b must be equal to minus h bar. So, the Schrodinger equation becomes this. To solve this equation, we must separate the wave function into two, as follows, so that we can have two separate Schrodinger equations. The time-dependent Schrodinger equation, whose solution is this, and the time-dependent Schrodinger equation from which we can derive the energy quantization formula as follows. This energy equation tells us that every electron in an atom can have infinitely many different values of energy since each value of n corresponds to a different energy of the same electron, and n is unbounded. So, any electron in an atom can be thought to be in all the energy levels of the atom, at the same time. Because of course, the math tells you that it can have the energies of all the levels at the same time. That is a famous quantum mechanical statement you have probably heard, and it is where the weirdness of quantum mechanics begins. I would like to inform you that this kind of solution is caused entirely by the complex number i in the wave function psi. So, what happens if we take it away? Okay. Let's find out. But before we continue, please take a second to click on that subscribe button and the like button. It wouldn't really cost you anything, but it would help support this channel so that I will be able to continue creating more interesting videos for you. Let's take the wave function to be this. We have left out the complex number i. This function is also a solution to the Schrodinger equation, and that demands that a be equal to h bar on 2m and b be equal to minus h bar. So the Schrodinger equation becomes this, in contrast to this one. Notice the little changes. Equation 1 has no complex number, while equation 2 has the complex number i. The two equations are almost the same. What is more interesting is that, for both equations, I can derive all the equations in quantum mechanics such as the commutation relations, the Dirac equation, the Heisenberg uncertainty relations, and so on. And all those equations will have the same forms. Differences will only emerge at the level of interpretation, and the equations with real numbers will demand more natural interpretations than the one with the complex number i. Let's look at some examples. For the complex wave function, the momentum operator is minus h bar d dx. The energy operator is i h bar d dt. And the position operator is just x. For my real wave function, I derive the momentum operator as h bar d dx and the energy operator as minus h bar d dt, and the position operator still as x. Let me quickly show you that I am correct. An operator is defined as a rule that if allowed to act on a function will produce an eigenvalue of that function. Let's use my energy operator to demonstrate this. E kappa psi is equal to this. Differentiating the exponent with respect to t yields minus omega psi. We know that h bar omega is energy, so we see that e kappa psi is equal to e psi. Hence, my energy operator is correct. You can do the same to verify my other operators. Now, for the complex wave function, the commutation of x and p is equal to minus h bar. But with my real wave function, the commutation is minus h bar. 
the multiple of the uncertainties of x and p is greater than or equal to one half the magnitude of the expectation value of the commutation of x and p. When you insert the value of the commutation, you end up with the equation delta x delta p greater than or equal to h bar over 2, which is the Heisenberg uncertainty relation. Notice that you will have the same results whether you use my commutation value minus h bar from the real wave function or i h bar from the complex wave function. Furthermore, for my real wave function, I found the following angular momentum operators and their commutations as follows. Who would have thought you can find the spin operators without the complex number i? But after a lot of work, I did find them to be this. Hence, the spin commutations are as follows. We can combine these spin operators to have the three alpha matrices of the Dirac equation and the one beta matrix as follows. And these will satisfy the Dirac equation where now psi is real. It took me a very long time and a lot of work to develop this math and to find these matrices to show you that a real wave function works exactly like a complex one. So please support this channel by subscribing and liking this video. Even though the equations all look the same, the solutions and hence interpretations would not be the same. Since we can have the same equations that quantum mechanical experiments have been based on, I can say it is therefore irrelevant to use the complex wave function which demands we abandon common sense. We should rather use the real wave function I have derived. Look, the Heisenberg uncertainty relation is what is used to explain the double slit experiments, and credit was given to the math of quantum mechanics for revealing the equation with the use of the complex wave function. But you have seen that even with my real wave function, you will still have the equation. So, the complex wave function should be abandoned because it causes so many problems with our intuition. To give you more reasons why the complex wave function should be abandoned, check my other video titled The Schrodinger Equation for Poor Planets, where I proved that planets obey the Schrodinger equation exactly like electrons do, and I derived that equation. If you use a complex wave function on the Schrodinger equation for planets, you will have solutions such as planets being everywhere in the solar system at the same time, which is just nonsense. But if you use the real wave function, you will have results that match observations. There are many other proofs I have given to back this, so just subscribe and browse through my playlist. There are more videos to come. Thank you and I hope I see you again in the next video.